hemp oil, flaxseed oil, and sesame seed oil. I just wondered if you have some comments. Well, they're absolutely the top oils. The top oil, shining top oil, is hemp oil. Hands down. If you didn't need any other oil, that's the one. But now note what I'm going to say to you. Any of the oils that have very good fatty acid composition also are very vulnerable. They oxidize quickly. So when you buy these very small amounts of them, flax would come in a strong second. The best way to take flax is sprouted flax. I would then add walnut oil. The Europeans here have a great advantage for that, especially the French. They have delicious walnut oil. That's by far the best. Avocado oil would come next. Uh, then I would probably say flat, uh, that uh, at that point, sesame oil. You've got to be cautious because about 60% of sesame oil is, is heated. And any heated oil and any rancid oil is a carcinogen. It causes cancer. And so that is true. Olive oil is a monounsaturate. Let me explain how a lay person would understand that. If I put a monounsaturate in a refrigerator, it gets thick. Do you follow that? Once it gets to 32 degrees or zero Celsius, it gets thick. Other oils that are saturated or non-unsaturated uh, non oils will not have the same. They'll stay fluid and liquid. Because of that density problem, if one over-consumes olive oil, and we would tell you if you overconsumed hemp oil. We would tell you if you overconsumed any oil. You know, the body needs minuscule amounts of oil, most of which are easily and readily achieved through sprouts. Remember, you're taking every day a juice called a green juice that has sunflower oil in it. Sprouted sunflower oil that's already broken down to a simple component. And some of these oils, uh, there's a lot of salesmanship going on out there. They tell you literally are good for your, your arteries. There's no oil that's good for your arteries. Let's start with that. What fatty acids are good for is fuel for the mitochondria of the body, the brain of the cell. They're, they're just like oil you put in your engine. You need that. You need fatty acids, but minuscule amounts. And most of us who are living the way we're teaching you to live need no oil. Now, if you like the taste of oil, the ones we mentioned are the best ones. But every one that's good for you, watch out and get small amounts because they go bad quick. And do refrigerate. I don't care if you live in the godforsaken cold weather, still refrigerate. Because it's best to do that. Take them out a few minutes. Again, what we're doing is we're going from person to person, staying focused and getting a lot done. I have a question about omega-3s. Um, are we, how are we getting it? Is it true that we need them? I had that belief that they're good for us. Okay, omega-3s is what I just talked about, but I'll repeat ver verbatim what I just said well, a minute ago. I understand what you just said, but I guess my question would be then, are we getting enough of it? First of all, do you believe we need it? And second, are we getting enough of it in the live food diet? Okay, well, omega-3s are omega-3s. Are they good for us? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have a question about the omega-3s. If you were asking where on, a on Earth you would get the most omega-3, it's on the Hippocrates Living Food Diet. Where do you get the best omega-3? You get it from germinated seeds, nuts, grains, and beans, all which inherently and easily have fats in it and oil in it. The great news is when you take those fats, they already, through germination and sprouting, break down to fatty acids. Unlike what you buy in a bottle called hemp, it's not a fatty acid at that point. It still has to spend hours of work and energy for your body to convert it over to a usable fuel for what? The mitochondria of the cell, which is the brain of the cell. Whereas in sprouting, it's already done for you. The fats are already broken to usable fatty acid. Instant fuel for the cell. And yes, if you then say, I want more because I'm a real thinker, or I'm a, a major athlete, and I would promote that, by the way, then you would be taking hemp, you would be taking flax, you would be taking walnut, you would be taking avocado, etc. But if you're drinking green drinks, you're getting a lot of fatty acid, providing you put what in? <coughs> no, you put sprouts, again going back to what first thing I said, and the sprout that's in every green drink, if it's religion, the sunflower. A major, major good source of that. But again, every sprout. You can buy, what I use at home is I take flax that's sprouted and ground up, and I throw that on my salad. That's better than the oil. To be honest, it does, it's not as volatile either. It doesn't go bad. I've been growing the seeds up, but that's not the same thing. You told us the benefit of the water. 
exactly where you germinate. You know, we all go. They're becoming widely available. So when you go out to buy the flax seed, as an example, look and you'll see sprouted flax, and then grind it because flax is almost impossible to digest. That's why Anna Maria has you soak it and then drink what's out of that. You get the benefit that way. Yes. Uh, 